G'day, it's Brezzo here and uh, I'm in the shop today and this is episode four of how to build a Victorian style arch steel garden bridge. Uh, this is a project I've been working on for a while. The bridge itself is around about three meters long, it's one meter high, about one meter wide. And when I showed you this render right back in uh, episode one, I had decided that I wanted to paint it those beautiful Victorian colors like Brunswick green and that beautiful creamy yellow color. And uh, when it got round at the stage where I had to choose the paint down at the paint shop, of course I went with orange. <laughs> and not just any orange, this is international orange, which is the same colour that they painted the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. And uh, last year my wife and I were in San Francisco and we hired push bikes and we rode across the bridge. And uh, I don't know, the, um, the colour stuck with me and I just thought, hmm, this is going to look great in the garden. And the thing is that the location where this is going is in amongst a lot of greenery and shrubs and so on. I didn't want it to disappear into the background. So yeah, this is going to stand out well and truly. Anyway, today we're going to look at uh, building the handrail for the bridge and uh, fitting that to the structure. And then in the next episode after this one, we're going to install the bridge in its finished location. So let's check it out. Well, it's been a few developments since we met last, and the first one being I've settled on the design of the handrail. Now this material here is 92mm uh, by 19 Merbau, which is a uh, material sold here in Australia for outdoor decking. It's actually uh, a rainforest hardwood that comes from uh, the Philippines and the Solomons, a place like that. And it's uh, sold as being, you know, moderately durable. I think in this application, being up out of the wet and not being close to the ground, it should be fine, as long as I keep the paint up to it. So here's one piece that's been clamped down to the top of the stanchions, and it's taking that curve quite easily. And uh, what I need to do is transfer the hole positions in the, the mounting plates to the underside of that board and pre-drill for the screws so there's no chance of splitting this. Now the, the actual handrail is going to be laminated from two thicknesses of that material. The bottom one here has been machined to a 15 degree angle on both edges and it's 60 millimetres wide across that bottom face. And these plates are 15 millimetres wide so there'll be a little bit of overhang both sides. And what I'm going to do now is get the other one of these sawn, get it cleaned up and then we can get the first pair of these uh, held down with the screws and when they're in place, we can bond the top uh, board with some epoxy resin boat building glue. This um, board here is just to keep the stock down hard against the table. If that lifts and you've got your blade already set at an angle, it's going to change the geometry of the cut. So this is just an attempt to keep it tracking at the high height of the table. That is looking a bit burnt on that edge, but I'll give that a light plane with a smoothing plane and just arras this bottom edge before we put it together.
I've got this handrail held down now tightly with four clamps onto the brackets and uh, I've checked the overhang on the end here and I'm happy with that so what I need to do is to pre-drill this wood to match up with these screw holes and there are four in each of these steel plates and uh, I'm a bit worried about the screws that I'm using splitting this wood they are a fairly coarse threaded screw and this wood is a little bit brittle so I've made a, a little punch just from a piece of 5mm drill shank uh, pressed into a piece of steel and I can get that into that screw hole there and just tap it up underneath so I can do that for each of the screw positions and the other thing I'll do is just mark off the end of that plate and I'm going to cut my timber rail uh, to the correct length and I'm going to put a 15 degree taper on the end of that as well to match the 15 degree taper on this edge here. I'll get all this sanded up and then more or less screw it down uh, in place and then laminate the next piece of wood on top. Move that clamp over, I can get at that one. I've just cut that off 15 degrees on the docking saw and I'll give that a light sand, just arrows the edges. And here are my four pre drill positions. So I'll get those drilled for each of those stanchions and we'll get this back on. And then we're going to have fun laminating the top piece onto that. I think they're going to be okay. So I can drill right through here. Uh, the screws penetrate almost to the other side and there will be another piece of wood on top of that so we should be good. I've got this held down at either end now with a clamp and I'm starting at the second stanchion in from the right. I'm just going to get a couple of screws in here. I think I'll just progressively get the screws in and get them tightened up and see how we go from there. That's always going to be the difficult one because of this acute angle here. It's really hard to line up the, the driver uh, on the axis of the screw. Well, no splitting, which is good. Well, that's all four of those, so I'm just going to work my way along and get all of the screws in, 16 all together. And do the same on the other side, and then we're going to do some laminating. This is the, the very end one, and this is the one that really has the most tension on it. I've got the clamp pulled down really hard there, and I put two screws in here. See if I can get a screw in this one. Now, if I let that clamp go, it should hold. Oh, did. Ah. That worked better than I thought it would, really. So I got two more at the other end. Well, there is the first piece of timber pulled down tight on the edge closest to the camera. And I've got the ends cut to the correct 15 degree angle. And it seems to be pulling down nice and tight all the way along. Now on the other side, I've got the, the upper layer of timber on there with the upper lamination and it's just been left uh, the original width I think it's 90 millimeters wide with a pencil round edge on all four edges and that is also pulling down nice and tight against the underneath section and that's going to be important when I bond this with the epoxy resin glue.
So we've got to get a tight fit all the way along. If there's any voids or air pockets, the glue won't bond and moisture is going to migrate underneath that gap. This is uh, what I'll be using to laminate together these two handrail sections. I've used this stuff before, it's, it's great. Uh, it's expensive, 120 bucks for a four litre pump pack of this stuff, but a little bit goes a long way. So these also have the integrated uh, measuring pumps. So this one does a five to one mix ratio. So one pump of that, one pump of that gives you the correct ratio. So um, I'll mix together some of that in a cup. We're gonna add some talc because that's going to bulk out the resin and increase its viscosity so that I can paint that on and it's not just going to run down the sides of the, the timber. Now, I don't know if talc is the right material to use. I've used it before. It's cheap. It's accessible. You can buy specialist um, fillers to go in this, this epoxy resin, uh, microspheres, microbeads and so on. But essentially they do the same job. They just bulk out the resin. So I'll get this mixed up, get it painted on, get it clamped up and I've made a little gauge here just to give me the correct offset when I laminate the two sections together so that it's aligned when we clamp it. Okay, let's go. So I'm just going to start with one pump of each. I think that's going to be enough, but I can always mix up some more. I'll give that a stir. And you can see how liquid that stuff is, and I think if I put it on neat like that, it's just going to get absorbed into the wood and leave a lot of gaps. about the talc is it wets very readily it mixes into the resin quite easily I'm not worried about the color of it so that's already increased the viscosity of that stuff and I sort of want it to be consistency so it'll just paint on and just sit up on the surface So that's starting to look like what I want. Okay, I'm just going to sacrifice a cheap paintbrush here to get this stuff on. So that's sort of the thickness of film that I think I'll need. It's got a single clamp on there, you see the glue is squeezing out, it's just going to drip everywhere. And I've got to get the correct alignment here at this end, and it's way over at this stage. Okay, that's close. Okay, let's sort of taking care of this end. I've got, I need an eight millimeter overhang here. It's probably a little bit less. Then I'll use my gauge to just go along and get the offset correct and stuff with the clamps on. But um, yeah, it seems to be going all right. Okay, that end is correct, so I'm going to clamp that down hard and just work my way along. Okay, let's pull down tight, there's glue squeezing out everywhere, so I've got a big clean up to do, but 
I wanted to make sure that I got a good spread and a good squeeze out both sides, so that's important. Cleanups cons inconsequential, I can do that. So let me get that cleaned up and we can move forward. Yes. I'm just going through the process now of fitting these gussets for the final time and this had a coating of uh, zinc primer on it and where the galvanized seal strap fits over this I don't want to get any moisture penetrating in the gap between that steel strap and the bracket so what I'm proposing to use is this stuff this is a polyurethane sealant it's um, easy to apply it's easy to clean up and if I put just enough on there, it will form a bond as well as squeezing out of the joint so that um, there's really no chance that moisture is going to get in here. Now remember this piece of steel that I'm doing this on is just uh, hot roll black steel and uh, it'll corrode, <laughs> I guarantee it, if moisture gets in there and no amount of paint is going to stop that. But this polyurethane sealant is what the motor industry uses now and cars have been pretty good at withstanding corrosion over the last 10 years or so so I figure if it's good enough for a car it's good enough for me so I'll go and get this one on I'll put some sealant on the other side and we'll bolt this up tight You can see that polyurethane squeezed out of that joint there and I'd just wipe it off with a cloth and scrape away as much as I can. But that at least guarantees that there are no voids. So the water cannot wick itself inside that joint there. So uh, that gives me at least some peace of mind anyway. So on the back here I'll put some more sealant, we'll get the other four screws in and just keep doing that. The only downside of this stuff is you get it on your hands and your fingers and it's, it's a little bit messy but I figure it's worth it. Okay, I'll get that excess cleaned off and all of these are then done. Uh, they then have to come out as a, as a complete unit and I can finish all the paint work. The bit that I don't like doing. This is the thing that's worrying me. That zinc primer is not adhering very well to this black steel. I think it's the oxide coating that's causing the problem. And I've got to make a decision yet about whether I brush paint over that again, try and bond that really tightly or I've got a two pack etch primer which I might be able to put over the top of that but either way um, it's not very encouraging when you see paint just doesn't even stick I mean I put that on yesterday and it should have dried by now but uh, clearly there's going to be a problem Okay, this is just an update on where I'm at uh, at this stage. What I have done is I've cleaned and painted all of the exposed steel. 
I ended up doing this with a brush. Um, it just was way easier than using a spray gun in this enclosed space and I don't want to take it outside at the moment. We've got showers and rain and wind uh, so I'm trying to do this indoors. So I've used the same zinc rich primer which uh, on these galvanized surfaces anyway just gives you good adhesion with the next coat. It's not really to protect this, it's just to provide an intermediate coat. And I took all of the diagonal bracing out to do this and the reason being that I wanted to get a good coating of uh, zinc primer on this area here. Remember this is hot rolled steel, it's not galvanized. And when I put these braces back, I'm putting the polyurethane sealer in this area here and then bolting up that surface tight. And the idea is that uh, I can stop water from penetrating into that area. So uh, it's going okay, but it's a bit messy and uh, you end up getting seal all over your hands as you try and clean off the excess. So this one here has been done. You can see where it's squeezed out. I've tried to clean that up. And the problem is that um, the top coat that I'm using, the, the finish coat, doesn't bond very well with polyurethane sealer. So I'm going to have to go over that with a water-based undercoat and then put the top coat on. And I'm saving that bit, the top coat, for the big reveal because you wouldn't believe what colour I've chosen. That's just a little bit of a, a signal to you. The only problem with this is you've got to put one of these straps in front, one behind, and at the bottom it's the opposite. So I'm just having a bit of grief here trying to get the orientation right and I messed that up. And of course you've got wet sealer on there which doesn't help. So somehow we get that one in front. That's it, got it. So that's the correct orientation and what I need to do now is get some seal on the bottom ones and get the bolts through. This is the uh, the messy bit. I'm going to try and wipe this, and it just smears everywhere. And of course, you get it on your fingers, on your hands. And I don't really want to use a solvent, just in case it attacks the zinc primer that I've got. I'm just making that worse. Yeah, one of those little CNC robots that they use in the automotive industry that applies just the right amount of sealer, just where you want it. There you go, that's good enough. It sort of appears out of nowhere. I'm not too worried about having a sort of a fillet there because that's going to shed water better. The biggest issue is, like I said, um, getting the top coat to stick to that. So I'll just wash a bit of water-based primer around that area. Well, there is the whole structure now. It's all been sealed, painted, primed. Uh, the handrail is still to be done and it's going to have an undercoat and then a couple of coats of a water-based enamel, um, like an exterior grade enamel. 
and uh, when it came off it stayed pretty close to its original curve it did pull up a little bit at the ends as you can see there but uh, it certainly makes it a lot easier to reassemble that this will just give you some idea of uh, the process for getting this handrail held down to these uh, cleats here and uh, you can see the galvanized hex headed screws and I put a, a fiber washer between the, the head of the screw and that steel plate and that was just so that when I drove these up hard it didn't uh, wear the paint off and expose the bare steel and you can see that polyurethane sealant squeezing out of that joint there and yeah look I'm a bit fanatical about um, <laughs> getting this steel uh, weatherproof and uh, I know that if you put a piece of mild steel out in the environment it's going to corrode I mean that's just what it does and all I'm doing here is putting as many barriers as I can between the corrosion and this material now this polyurethane sealant it's a bit messy to clean off but I'll wait till it's cured and I'll probably scrape it off with a knife or something uh, or it can just stay like that nobody's going to see it Anyway, let's get the handrail on the other side. Okay, so I've just got to get this last handrail on now, and that's just a matter of putting polyurethane sealant on top of these cleats here, getting the handrail up in place, and then finding the, or matching up the screw holes in the wood with the holes in these cleats here, and it's a little bit awkward, but we'll give it a go. Now the idea is when I put that wood on top there it's just going to squeeze out all the way around and I just don't want moisture penetrating the joint between the wood and the steel. So even though it's going to squeeze out and make a bit of a mess I'd rather have that than have moisture sitting there the whole time. So these are the fiber washers and that hex headed wood screw will go through and the washer is just going to provide a little bit of um, protection for the paint when I drive these up hard. That's two, uh, and that sort of locates everything else now, so I can just go ahead and drive the rest of the screws in. Of course, these ends are a little bit more of a problem. You gotta pull that down and try and get a screw in there.
just doing the last little bit of a tighten up with a spanner just to be sure get a bit of feel for how it's talking putting on those screws and uh, this sealant I'm a bit reluctant to wipe it off with a rag it sort of smears and makes a huge mess I think what I'll do is uh, let it cure and then I'll just sort of cut it very lightly and scrape it away it comes off fairly easily once it's cured okay so that's uh, the handrail done both sides now I guess we're ready to install it okay well that's it uh, we've got the handrail in place now and everything's ready to go on Thursday we're going to move this down to the creek and uh, concrete it into its uh, finished position and just in finishing up the video today I'm just going to point out that um, I didn't get slack and not bother to fit all the decking this is just laid on there so you get an idea of what it's going to look like at this stage um, I don't want to screw it down because it's just going to make it heavier when we shift it and you can see here that I have actually notched all of the wood to fit around the stanchions everything's been chamfered and beveled and so on and uh, another reason why I haven't fitted this yet is that it's uh, copper chrome arsenic treated and uh, it's done to a H4 classification which means that the pressure treatment goes right through the wood and that means that these boards are going to shrink considerably across their width as they dry out and for that reason I'm only going to fit a single screw at the middle of each board where it uh, crosses the, the curved rail if I was to put a screw on either edge, uh, what will happen is as the board shrinks, it will crack in the center. So a single screw will do, and uh, I'll probably also put a, a layer of polyurethane underneath each one of these just to stop it from rocking backwards and forwards. So uh, on Thursday, we're shifting this with the tractor. Uh, all the footings and the, the position down at the creek has been taken care of. We'll show that in the next video. And uh, yeah, it's turned out rather nice, I think. Um, not really convinced about the colour of this handrail. Looked a lot darker in the paint shop, but um, I think it's okay. Okay, so um, check us out on the next video when you see, uh, hopefully, a bottle of champagne being smashed against the bridge. And uh, I'm also considering a little bit of a follow-up. I want to put a, a brass plaque here. And uh, one of my viewers has commented that all bridges should have a brass or a bronze plaque with the date of the construction, preferably in Roman numerals. So that's what I'm going to try and do is fit a little brass plaque here and uh, that's just going to complete the look. But what do you think of the orange? Let me know. Is it overboard? I don't think so. Anyway, thanks for watching.